All right, guys, this is going to be a video on saving preset assets to your DAS, your custom DAS library. Um, this library is what I use to uh, save and organize all my assets that I use for all my characters. And uh, it, it helps me um, build scenes quicker, even though it still takes me a long time to... Uh, come up with an idea for a scene that's a totally different story but um what i like to do is uh on my free time or when i'm bored and just playing around when i'm doing these um simple lighting renders um i like to uh build outfits for my characters and then just render them in plain background sometimes that i show you in my other videos where i'm showing you how to light a, a basic scene with just a character in the scene in a, on a plain uh, HDRI background or plain background and so forth. So I like to build outfits and sometimes I will build a scene and I'll save a scene as its own thing or I'm working on um, something I bring in from Marvelous Designer and I'm just doing some test stuff but I need to save versions of it inside my dad's library so I could come back to working on it at a, at a later date so uh, I'm gonna show you what I do when I'm like making custom folders because I have a lot of custom folders even though you should limit the amount of custom folders you have inside DAS but um, if you have a good SSD it shouldn't really be that big of a problem it, it'll be a problem for me because I use hard drive more than I use SSD so my loading times can take a while to go through all the folders that I have in DAS to load content. But I still find it's very um it's very good to organize a specific, you know, set of preset folders for preset stuff that you want to work with in the future. So let's switch over to DAS. So as you can see this is the scene that I built for the thumbnail. And uh I have this whole scene. And let's say I want to save this scene out. I'm not going to save these files because it's going to take me a while to save these things on my hard drive. But I'm just going to show you what I would do to organize my stuff when I'm doing with it, when I'm working with it. So I have a folder here. I'm going to use this, this folder right here called Work Preset Folder. You know, it's a Work Preset Folder. It's in my U drive. It's a drive that I have a lot of junk on. Uh, one of my hard drives I have a lot of stuff on. So I'm going to make this my preset folder inside DAS. So to do that I gotta go to the content library and under the content library I'll go to these little hamburger things up here or whatever they want to call these lines and I click on it and get the menu and then I go to content directory manager. You could also get to that by going to preferences then going to content then content directory manager but this is much quicker. So just go here Content Directory Manager, click it. So now I want to make a DAS format folder. So I go to DAS Studio Formats. Don't go to DAS Connect. Don't go to Cluster Directory. Go to DAS Studio Formats. As you can see, I got a bunch of folders in here for a whole bunch of different things that I do with each of these folders. But I'm going to make a new one so we could go through the steps. So you don't want to do a content set. Content set is when you want to customize a specific profile for your DAS. Because as you can see here, this profile only uses a select amount of my library folders. My desktop has a different set of library folders checked. So if you pick one, if I pick one of these, it's going to load a different profile for my DAS. So if I just wanted to just have DAS only load um, just poser stuff. I can make a own, my own content set that are dedicated to just loading only poser or Victoria 4 or any other library that I specifically just want for that. Like this MD test library is what I use to have a clean version of DAS, but I could test my Marvelous Designer clothes only and it will only load a clean version of DAS with like Genesis 8 only, nothing else, no morphs, no nothing, you know, 
and it'll just it'll, it'll just load that if I if I pick this and accept it. But we're not going to, we're not dealing with that right now. What we're dealing with now is creating a directory. So to create a directory, go inside Dad Studio Formats, click Add. There goes my work preset folder that I have in the U drive, and just double click it, and just click Select Folder. So now I have another folder inside my DAS format folders. I could have made it inside here, which is kind of an empty drive, but I, I've built this drive to be pristine for my test stuff, so I don't want to mess with that. So I'll put it inside here. So there goes my work preset folder. So I click accept. And it's going to take a minute, depending on your hard drive or your SSD and it's going to pop and now I could go inside it. So there goes the folder right here that I just created. These are the other folders that I have. This is my personal folder where I have all my characters and stuff inside. I have my animation, my cameras and so forth. I'm going to build this whole thing out inside that new folder. So in this new folder, now that I have my new working folder to work from, where I want to keep all my presets for my characters, my lights, my render settings, my simulation settings, my scene settings, my animation, so forth. I'll just start creating folders. So I'll start, I'll go right click on it and I'll go create a subfolder. And a subfolder I want to create is characters. That's like one of the first folders you want to create. So if I want to save my character, I'll double click my character. And then I will go to the plus sign over here and I'll go to character preset and then I'll just say eh, I'll name my character this character is Brittany and then I'll just click save I don't want to save this because like I said it's gonna take me a while to save it out so I don't want to pad my runtime so I'll just click save and it will save it out so it will just save the specific character all her morphs all her shape uh, her current pose because she's in a pose right now so it's going to save the specific character in this pose usually when I'm saving a character I want to save the character in the A pose or the T pose you know I don't want to save him in a current pose because if I save him in a current pose I'm going to have to put him in the T pose eventually before I apply another pose to it so I don't I don't usually like to save characters in a uh, specific poses that's, that's in the scene you know so like this character here I would have made this character before I made this scene so I would have the character inside here already and I would apply it to this scene I wouldn't usually make a character in a current scene because that's just a lot of work you know because then you got to go into the current scene you got to go find the character that you have in the scene select the character and then save the character out and you know if you want to go to good thumbnail and all that stuff you, you, you usually don't want to do that so usually you want to build your character first set your character preset up when you save your character out as a preset character preset and you'll have your character in this area another thing I would like to create is create a sub, create another subfolder now the subfolder would be scenes even though you don't really need to save scenes because usually when you get the environment from wherever you get the environment, whatever vendor product you get it from, it's already there. The scene is already there. But the reason why you would want to save scenes is if you set something up in the scene to have the scene. You know what I'm saying? You know, like if you have a, uh, a coffee, let's say you have a cafe and you have a table with food already on the table. But when you load the scene from the vendor, the, 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 the table is empty. But you built that table up. You know, you're going to want to have a... And you probably want to use that scene later on. You're going to want to have a, a, a preset for just that scene. So an example would be, I would save the scene subset. The difference between a scene subset and a scene is that a scene subset could be easily applied to a working scene that you're currently in. So suppose I had this scene and I had a scene subset. Whatever I had in the scene subset, I could double click on it and I'll apply it to this scene without saying, do you want to close and save this scene? Because if it was saved as a scene, 
will save as a scene. This scene that I'm loading in the in here will say, do you want to save the scene and close the scene out and load the new scene? You know, I, I don't I don't usually want to do that. If I want to go back to a scene or apply something from a scene into a scene, I usually want to save it as a scene subset. So like props or whatever in a scene, scene subsets will save the whole thing as a prop and it'll bring it in. Like everything in this scene right here including the characters in their pose the lighting the environment light everything in this scene could be saved as a scene subset that you could bring in to another scene but if i saved it as a scene if i saved it as a scene it would overwrite this current scene because you're loading a new scene you know so that's one thing i like to do is like i will go into scene subset and let's say I call this witchy library. And inside here, this is the scene subset. If I was doing a scene, it would just save the damn thing out. It would just save everything. It wouldn't even ask me if I wanted what I want to save in the scene. It would just save everything out. But as a scene subset, if I want to use a scene again somewhere else, usually what I want to do is I want to remove the Genesis 8 figures because I have two Genesis 8 figures in here. And I'll keep everything else. Sometimes I'll remove the cameras because sometimes I want to apply my own cameras or I want to use the new cameras or whatever. So sometimes I would take out the cameras. I would sometimes leave the lights in there depending on how I lit the scene. You know, I would leave the lights in the scene. But usually uh, a lot of the times I would take the cameras out or I would leave one camera in there as a starting camera to play with in the scene. Because sometimes I'll have a scene with 22 cameras in there shooting this at the same thing at different angles. And I don't want 22 cameras to pop up in my my scene light, my scene menu over here, you know, to deal with. So I will usually take the cameras out, take the figures out. And if I want to load that scene back again to use it to do something else, I would just load the scene and then I'll load my character. So it will load individually. So the scene background will load. And then the characters, I will just go to the character menu and load the character in and then start building from there. Another thing I would make is, uh, create a folder, is render settings. This is a folder I like to use somewhat a lot. I don't really have a lot of, no, I have a lot of render settings. What am I saying? I have a lot of render settings. The so render settings is these things inside here. So whatever presets whatever changes you make in your render settings, anything you make in here, your dome rotations, all the stuff you do inside here, your, uh, your custom size, you know, you wanna go inside here and make a preset for that, which will be render settings right here. Call it render, or just, yeah, render settings one. Then you start picking and chooses choosing what you wanna you wanna save. Usually I don't really care. Once I set it here, once I set it over here, I usually don't get too picky with picking what's going on over here unless I want to unless I want to keep this out. This part out. The trans not the scales, the constraints. The constraints it's this setting right here is the pixel size. I'll usually I'll usually disable this sometimes, not all the time. Because sometimes I'll I don't want to override a, a preset uh let's say it's a ten eighty ten eighty P or or uh four eighty P or uh whatever pixel size or whatever ratio I have, I will usually take that out of my, uh, yeah, here it is, dimensions. I will usually take these out, the aspect ratio, the pixel size, and so forth. So that if I load the render settings into another scene that I already set up and I have the aspect ratio that I want it as, I don't have to worry about this overriding and I have to go back inside here and change it to whatever I want to change it to. So it doesn't override it like that, but this is uh, that's another setting that I would like to, that I usually like to uh, to save. The one that I use the most out of everything is a subfolder called outfits. So as you can see, I have 
two witches. And these, all of these outfits are kit bash. It's just a mix of a bunch of vendors, different vendors, hair, gloves, heels, boots, stockings, you know, all these. And I would just select the character. And under the outfit folder, I'll click the plus sign and I'll click save wearables. And I'll just name this Brittany's Witch Outfit. And I'll save that out. I don't want to save it because, like I said, it might take a while for me to save depending on what, what my hard drive is doing. And my hard drive can be finicky sometimes. So I'll just save that outfit out. I'll select this character right here. And I'll do the same thing for her. And I'll go to wearable presets. And Brittany will be in here already. So I'll just go Yvonne Witchy Outfit and save it. So Yvonne Outfit will be there and Brittany Outfit will be there. And I could take Yvonne Outfit and put it on a nude, a naked Brittany. And she will end up, be wear she'll be wearing this outfit. And I could take Brittany's outfit and put it on Yvonne because it's saved as a preset. So anything on the Genesis 8, because these are Genesis 8 figures, I could put on any female Genesis 8 figure and they could, they, could, they could wear it, swap it. The only thing you'll have to be concerned about is if you have custom morphs on the outfits. Like Brittany here has some custom morphs on her breast area and Yvonne's breast is not as big. So you'll have to adjust that morph when you apply the outfit onto Yvonne. So that's some little tweaks and stuff you have to deal with there. But you could easily quickly take an preset outfit from one character and put it on another character um, what's another one another one I'll probably make is uh, create a subfolder for um, animations I'll make another one um, I'll create another subfolder for lights which will be uh, lights will be here which I don't have any lights in the scene, so I can't really use that. So there's no point. Police car moving by. So I don't have no lights to work with, but if I was doing the animation, you know, animation would be um, under pose presets. I'll say animate, animate pose. And then in here, I'll take the range. I'll go down to animator range and I'll save my preset. I usually want to go here and check um, all modified only. This way, you don't have a you don't run into issues where you have like too much. If you have too much morphs or whatever, it won't load every morph for everything that you're doing. This kind of saves some time sometimes, you know. But sometimes it wouldn't work. Sometimes it works. But I usually like to use uh, check only, modified only for a lot of things. Another folder you want to create is create subfolders. Um, materials. This would have its own subcategories. So I'll go inside here and create subcategories for like Brittany. I'll go inside here and create subfolders for like. Uh, Yvonne, etc., etc. The same thing with this. I'll create subfolders inside here for Brittany, and I'll create subfolders for Yvonne. And instead of having it at the root, because suppose you have 75 outfits you made for Yvonne, and I have 75 outfits I made for Brittany, you know. You don't want to put it all in outfits unorganized. You, you probably want to organize them into subcategories. So it's a good idea to uh, put subcategories inside there. You know, and that, that's basically all it is to to make a preset. You just make a organize a folder to do whatever you need to. Is and like I said, it's best to make a a preset for probably everything in this list here. Like cameras, you want to make a preset for. Shaders, you could make a preset for shaders too, but 
I don't really deal with shaders that much. I would put shaders under materials because usually when I'm dealing with shaders is I'm changing the shading or the color style for an outfit. So I'll put that under materials for a specific outfit, you know, or something like that. You know, uh, poses, this, this will go into poses as well. So this is a poses category, you know, and stuff like that. So when you're making um, presets, it's good to make a preset for pretty much everything inside hair that you know you're going to use. Like simulations, I do simulations, a preset for simulations. Like if I have a standard simulations for D-Force, I would create a, like one I'll have for timeline simulation, which I showed you in a video before, and a single frame simulation settings. You know, you could create a folder specifically for that. You know, that's that's the good thing about making the preset folders. So let's go over to the folder itself and see what we was doing. So as you can see, stuff started showing up inside the folder. And there goes the animation folder. And if I had saved the preset for the animation, it'll be inside here. Characters, it'll be inside here. Lights, materials, outfits. As you can see, I have two folders that I created for Brittany. If I save the preset for that, it will be inside here render settings and scenes you know basically that's that's all it is um let me see how long would it take me to do a scene preset let me just save out the preset real quick i'm going to save out the scene preset witchy library and i don't need my genesis figures because i don't want it in there and i don't need the cameras but i want everything else i want the render settings these are the render settings right here. And I want everything else, the city backdrops and all that stuff. And I click accept. And that was pretty quick. And it's gonna pop up right here. It should already be popped. Yeah, there it goes. It already popped up inside the uh inside the uh folder. Inside the scenes folder. So I got a scene set inside the scene folder. If I want to save a scene, I will just do the same one and just click scene. And just name this one uh, full scene. And it will load everything that's in the scene, including the characters. And like I said, I, I, I will only do that if I want this to be like the complete saved out scene so that should be all when it comes to uh creating your own preset folder and um saving and organizing and working with character presets and other presets inside that because it's it's great when you uh you make your character you make your shape how your character looks you know the way the the, the character figure is and then you just save out the presets so you don't have to go through that every time you uh make the character or you don't have to load a scene for the character you could save the character preset out and load that character preset in any scene you have that's open you know you don't have to save it as a scene and then have to force it into another scene by merging it into a scene you can do that but it's not you don't want to do that you, don't do that just save your character preset, save your character outfit preset, bring in your character into the scene by loading the preset, the character preset, and then select the character and then load in the character outfit into the scene. And then once you got the character into the scene, you just work from there. You either load a scene you find from a vendor, start building your lights, building all that stuff out. And when you get everything perfect the way you want it, you can save the complete scene out and then you can save the scene set out so that you can use it for something else in the future and not have to load in your Genesis character along with the scene down the road. So that's all. I hope this was helpful and uh, uh, let me know if you, there's anything else you guys want me to make a video on and uh, I'll try to see if I can get around to doing it. So uh, good luck.